Oh, we welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this day. We welcome you into this new day, Lord, that you have given us this new opportunity to serve you, to know you, to hear your word, to hear your truth. And so we just want to thank you for today. Thank you for today in the mighty name of Jesus. So good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> we want to wish all our Irish friends, our Irish brothers and sisters, a blessed Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day. Um, it's not all about the drinking and, and all of that. It's about friendship, fellowship, good deeds. So celebrate that. It's time to celebrate that. So good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Psalm 71. Um, but Psalm 70, I'm not really going to go over it. It's really short. It's five verses. And um, I'm not going to spend time talking about it. But I will. Good morning, Abby. God bless you. Happy St. Patty's Day. You know, you know, I didn't wear my green today, but in support of my Irish brothers and sisters, but I will be wearing green a little bit later. <laughs> so let us celebrate with our brothers and sisters because we're all one. Okay, I'm going to read Psalm 70 quickly, but we're going to be talking about Psalm 71. We're going to focus on Psalm 71. Okay, Psalm 70 was a psalm of David. Uh, uh, it says, for the director of music of David, a petition. Good morning, Nilda. God bless you. Buenos dias. Como estamos, hermanita? God bless you. Psalm 70, it says, hasten, hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, uh, turn, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who who long for your saving help always say the Lord is great but as for me I am poor and needy come quickly to me God you are my help and my deliverer Lord do not delay all right so that was Psalm 70 that was a petition that David wrote it was a psalm a song that he wrote but today we're gonna to focus on Psalm 71 and we're going to do this in two parts because, again, this is a long psalm. So Psalm 71, we're going to break it up into two parts. And we don't know who wrote Psalm 71, but some of the scholars believe that this psalm was written by David um, because there are pieces of it that are repetitive from other psalms. And we'll go over that. Some of the some of the lines are quoted exactly as some other psalms that were written. Um, but then again, we know, you know, we know that um, anytime David wrote a psalm, like he wrote Psalm 70, he would write, write the title. In the title, he would say a psalm of David. This psalm doesn't say that. It doesn't say it's a psalm of David. Um, so again, it could have been written by a psalmist and he was quoting David right and and so um, we're just gonna go into this psalm because I believe this is how you write this is how you write your own prayer right have you ever written a prayer so let me ask you that have you ever written a prayer because if you haven't now is the time we should write our prayers or have you ever kept a journal of your prayers I, you know, I haven't done it recently, but when I used to commute into New York City every single day for the for 15 years, I would always have my Bible and I would always have a prayer journal with me and I would write my prayers down. And, um, you know, because my, my commute was so long, I had time to study and I had time to, to write and to pray there while I was on the bus. And... I know that there's prayer, prayers that I have in that journal that are still not answered to this day. But I know that the Father has heard them, you know, because they're made to be answered 
in a season. Okay, Abby says yes, she has a prayer journal. I think it's so good. I think it's so good for us to have it. This is what the Psalms is. It's really a prayer journal. And I want to encourage us to keep a prayer journal in this season, right? Just like as we see the Psalms were preserved for us to read today and something for us to learn how to pray. It's good to have that. And then we can pass it on down to our children and their children's children, right? And so I think that this is beautiful, but we're going to dive into Psalm 71 and we're going to dissect it a little bit. Um, and I, I believe that this, to me, this, what this is teaching me, the first, this first part is about persistent prayer, persistent prayer. So let's look at the first three verses, verses one through three. It says in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never, let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give me, give the command to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. So again, this, this psalm is, is a psalm made up of other psalms that were written. The psalmist used other psalms that were written so that he can have his own prayer to pray. So when he says, in you, Lord, I have taken refuge, let me never be put to shame. That particular line right there, that comes from Psalm 25 too, which is very similar. And it says, I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. So when you're writing your own prayer, right? Let's pretend that we have an assignment and that we are writing our own prayer journal. How do we put a prayer together? A prayer that glorifies God, a prayer that includes, that is sounds similar to the prayers that we read in the Psalms. Um, the first, the first thing that the, the psalmist talked about, the first line is about trust. Right? When we pray to God, we're praying with trust because we know we know we can trust him. Right? For us, when we go to the Father, it's we're going to him because we trust him. We wouldn't go and go to him if we didn't trust, right? Those those who follow false idols, right? They pray without hope. They're hoping. They're hoping they're prayer gets answered but we we the people of God when we pray and we're praying according to God's will and when we're praying in the name of Jesus we are praying believing and knowing that God is going to answer our prayer right we're not just praying like oh we hope we hope that this will happen no we are aligning ourselves to pray because we trust we're, we're casting our cares on, on the Lord. We are casting our cares on Him, knowing that somehow the answer is going to come, right? It may take years. It may take a few years before the answer gets, um, the answer comes and we see the manifestation of that. But there are, there are even, just like I said, I know that in my prayer journal, there's, there's probably a few prayers in there that haven't been answered, but I know that they will be answered because God is faithful. And even in the word of God, there's things that have been spoken that have not yet come to pass, but they will. They will, right? Verse 2, he said, in your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. You know, the, the psalmist reminded the Lord of his nature and character. He said, in your righteousness, because the Father is righteous. So when you're writing a prayer for your prayer journal, you start with trust. Talk about the Lord's character. Because as we remind him of who he is, right? It just, it reminds us, this is why we're, this is why we can trust him. It's really not to remind him, but it's to remind us that we can trust our Father because this is his character. This is his nature. His nature is to be righteous. And if he's righteous, he is going to turn his ear. 
verse 3 says be my rock of refuge to which i can always go to give the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress now this piece right here this piece is coming a part of it is coming from psalm 31 verses 1 through 3 Right, it says, and it's Psalms 31, 1 through 3 sounds very similar to Psalm 71, 1 through 3. Right? Here, let me read to you Psalm 31, 1 through 3, so you can hear the similarity. It says, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. That's what Psalm 71 says. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me come quickly to save me rescue me be my rock of refuge a, a strong fortress to save me since you are my rock and my fortress for the sake of your name lead and guide me so again these two psalms psalm 71 1 through 3 psalm 31 1 through 3 sound similar when you're writing your own prayer you can borrow you can borrow lines from the Psalms to compose your own Psalm. I love it. It's like an assignment. Okay. Verse four, deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, my, uh, you have been my hope, <clears throat> sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth from birth. I have I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. Mm -hmm. Again, the Lord, the, the psalmist is talking about trusting in the Lord, right? He, he is saying, from birth, I have relied on you. Now this, this here, this line, um, you brought me forth from my mother's womb. This line also is taken from psalm 22 verses 9 through 11. let me read that to you so you can hear the similarity and it says yet you brought me out of the womb you made me trust in you even at my mother's breast from the birth from birth i was cast on you from my mother's womb you have been my god do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. So what this tells me about this line, what the psalmist was saying here, we're just interpreting what the psalmist is saying here. What he is saying that this from my mother's womb. So this is talking about a long term relationship. The psalmist had a long term relationship. He is saying that even before he was born from the womb, he had to trust in the Lord. Why? Because it may have been a difficult pregnancy. Because maybe in the womb, there was, there was trouble. It, um, there could have been, you know, things happening where the mother was not healthy. And at any point, the psalmist could have not made it. So he's saying his entire life has been about trusting in the Lord. And that's how that's how it is for us. Our entire lives are about trusting in the Lord. And not only trusting in the Lord, but that the Father has always cared for him. Just like he's always cared for us. Right? If the father was faithful when he could not cry out, when he was in the womb, if the father could care for him then, how much more would he be caring for him now? Okay, verse 7. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. Again, he's talking about trust. This whole, so far what we've read, these first seven verses are about trust because he's saying, you are my refuge. <clears throat> but he's saying, I have become a sign to many, meaning he's, people are wondering, he's become a wonder, right? And people are wondering, how, how is this man who's so afflicted, who has so much trouble still trusting in God? 
right? How how is he still trusting in the Lord when he got all these issues? Why does why doesn't he give up? The Lord's not listening to you. That's like that's like Job, like Job's friends, right? Job's friends, you know, they were accusing him. They were saying, "Oh, it's because you didn't do this and because you didn't do that or because you did this that God is not listening and answering to your prayers that he's taken everything away from you." But you know, we can't get caught up when when we see that God is not answering prayers and things are happening in our lives, we have to remember to trust in him that he will bring us through. Right? He will bring us through. And so, yes, maybe he is a sign. Maybe he is a sign that despite everything that's happening in the life um in his life that he he is a sign because he can still trust in the Lord. That he's not going to let go of his trust because he knows that God has protected him and watched over him and, and kept and cared for his life. Verse 8, my mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Mm-hmm. When you're pr writing your prayer, when you're writing your prayer, don't forget, write your praise. Write your praise. Praise and prayer go hand in hand. Prayer and praise go hand in hand. Because we are still giving thanks to God for his deliverance, for his answer. Okay? Verse 9. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. So this... This line right here, do not cast me away when I'm old. Um, this is what, this is the line that some scholars felt like, well, maybe, maybe David wrote this, right? Because now this psalmist is an older person now. He's lived many years and um, it could be, it could be David. But again, we just, we take that with a grain of salt because we don't know. David always stamped his psalms with his name. This could have been another psalmist, but He's saying, do not cast me away when I am old, when my strength is gone, right? Um, when my strength is gone, you know, the, 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 the psalmist is reminding the Lord to, to, to remain faithful to him. He was faithful to him in his younger years, but now that he has no strength, continue to remain faithful to him. And I think that's beautiful. That is beautiful. It says, for my enemies speak against me those who wait to kill me conspire together they say god has forsaken him pursue him and seize him for no one will rescue him you know people people are a trip right people are a trip when they see you down and out they come in for the kill and so if this was a psalm of david we would be seeing right now that nothing, nothing was different for David in his older years, how it was in his younger years. In his younger years, if this psalm was for David, in his younger years, he was constantly being conspired against. People were always against him. And here in his older years, if this was him, the same thing is still happening. <laughs> the same thing is still happening. He is saying, you know, for my enemies, right um my they <laughs> my enemies are still speaking against me right they're waiting to kill me they're to conspire against me and even in his older age the psalmist is still seeing the same pattern happening in his life listen we just have to accept the fact that the enemy will always try to mess with us right whether you were young, we're never going to, until we see Jesus face to face, we're never going to be rid of him until Jesus returns or until with him, we're with him face to face. In verse 12, do not be far from me, my God, come quickly, God, to help me. Um, again, this line is, it comes from two other Psalms, Psalm 22, 11, which says, do not be far from me for trouble is near and there is no one to help same line same line and in psalm 70 verse 1 it says hasten meaning move quickly oh god to save me come quickly lord to help me same line 
but what um i love what what it says you know um do not be far from me do not be far from me my god come quickly god to help me and he is saying he is saying this um because he needs help he's like there's no one to help me there's no one to help me and i need you to help me quickly lord and so this is why i was referring to this psalm as a psalm a prayer of persistence a prayer of persistence um even when we don't see answers we have to keep praying even when we don't see the the result we have to keep crying out we don't give up we don't give up to cry out just because we don't see the answer in in a week or two weeks a month six months a year two years five years ten years it doesn't matter we keep on praying why why do we keep on praying because Jesus taught us to be persistent and I'm gonna wrap it up with this in Luke 18 in Luke 18 Jesus taught the parable about the wood the widow and the judge Jesus taught this parable he's the one that's teaching us how to be persistent so we're just going to remind ourselves today to be persistent in our prayer it doesn't matter how long the answer takes to come we our job is to be persistent and so in Luke 18 it talks about this widow that lived in this town right and she kept coming to this judge and saying she would plead to him she would say grant me justice against my adversary grant me justice against my adversary what was going on well she was a widow her husband died he probably had a lot of debt and what happens she would be responsible for paying the debt and and so her adversary could have been a, a tax collector and because in that in those times women didn't have jobs right and the, the the husband left she had nothing she had nothing and so the adversary could have been a tax collector a debt collector somebody the irs coming after her and so she went to the judge she had no one to help just like the bible says here just like the side the, the um the psalmist says come quickly for there's no one to help who can help the judge so she would go to him and 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 ask him for help help me against my adversary and the judge he would just refuse he would not do as she asked he would he was not a righteous judge he wouldn't grant her her wish but she kept coming back she kept coming back and Jesus as he's telling the story he said that the judge said to himself even though I don't fear God or I care what people think but because she keeps bothering me I'm gonna grant her justice I'm gonna grant her justice and he also said and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones those who cry out to him day and night day and night will he keep putting them off that's what Jesus said that the judge said. Will God not bring about justice for his chosen ones? Those who cry out to him day and night. So that's what persistent prayer is. Persistent prayer is not um, like you pray about it once a week or once every six months. Persistent prayer is a continual reminder a continual reminder to bring this thing before God so if you're waiting for a prayer to be answered this is what we're learning today we do not give up on our requests we don't just we don't just say the request uh, you know like lightly right we don't we don't say oh God help me with this and then move on no we continually bring it up before the Father Jesus taught us to be persistent he taught us to be persistent. He said, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, those who cry out to him day and night, day 
and night. Will he keep putting them off? Uh, uh, an unright if an unrighteous judge finally decided to grant the wish of this this widow, how much more will God do for us? How much more? Jesus taught us to be persistent. That's the power of a persistent prayer. That is the power of a persistent prayer. And we're going to leave it at that. Do not be far from me, verse 12. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. That is the power of persistent prayer. Do not give up on your prayer. Do not give up on your prayer. I'm going to say it one more time in case you didn't hear me in the back of the room. Do not give up on your prayer. We pray consistently day and night, day and night. Okay, that's it. That is up to verse 12. Tomorrow we will resume, starting from verse 13 all the way to the end of Psalm 71. We will close out the week with Psalm 71. We want to thank the Lord for his word. We want to thank the Lord for his purposes. We want to thank the Lord for these prayers. And I want to encourage you, start your prayer journal. Start a prayer journal. Write down your prayers. Borrow from the prayers that are in the Psalms because the Psalms were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were inspired for the psalmist to write. You're going to write about trust. You're going to write with um, with the understanding of God's character and nature, not to remind him, but to remind yourself that God answers prayers because we, we remind ourselves of his goodness, his good traits. And we write prayers of persistence. Our prayers must be persistent. Okay? All right. That is it. That is it. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his shalom. Okay? Blessings. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy your day. Make it a great, great, great day. And I will see you back here manana. God bless you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.